Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm Pamela Clark, founder and director of the New Heights Educational Group, and I'm here with David Smith, the founder of Silicon Valley High School, who has helped us get these podcasts produced and delivered to you. Yes, Pamela, when we saw the great things that you and your army of volunteers were achieving at New Heights, we wanted to get involved. We're happy to work with you to leverage the internet and make quality education accessible and affordable to everyone, everywhere. Thank you, David. We appreciate Silicon Valley High School helping us to get these podcasts out to the hundreds of thousands of listeners from all over the world. So I hope you enjoy the show. In this week's episode, we will discuss education reform on mission. Hello, everyone. This is Danielle Washington coming to you live from Ms. Buffy Williams' office. <laughs> Just sitting around thinking about life and trying to become better people tonight, so check us out. Welcome back. You're on the air with Buffy Williams, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. Have been discussing the show's purpose on mission. Good evening. This is your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. Tonight's topic is school selection. How do you choose the right school for your child? A recap on last week's show. We look deeper into the myth versus statistics of classroom sizes and does it improve academic performance. On tonight's episode, we are discussing school selection. What is the right fit for your child? Join us in the discussion. Call us at 917-948-7542 or drop your comments in the chat or tag us on social media using the hashtag NHEG, or as always, post your comments on Twitter at Buffy underscore Awaken, or on Spreaker, Instagram, or YouTube. Remember, my New Heights fellow host, Erica Hansen show airs on Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When we talk about school choice, this is something that um, has kind of grown over the years. I can remember, of course, when I was in school, school choice was not even a, a part of the conversation for my particular community. I went to the school um, where I was zoned for. I'm sure that my parents... Um, did the best they could to put me in a, a good situation. But, you know, to even be in the position of having school choice is a privilege uh, in today's age. And, and I don't know if we as a nation um, fully recognize the privilege that is bestowed upon many people to be able to have these choices or to be able to select a school or community in which they would like for their child to go to school. But it is definitely um, becoming increasingly popular uh, with the new um, push for charter schools and homeschooling and uh, more parents sending their children to private schools. And then, of course, there are school vouchers for students to go to different schools and particular schools uh, in their area, Uh, maybe even magnet schools. But, and I know that this is nothing that's new, um, but remember that I come from um, a modest background as far as uh, economics were concerned. So school choice was one of those things wherever you um, went to school, you, you made the best of that opportunity. Um, so when we look at school choice, uh, what, uh, my reference tonight is coming from the U.S. Department of Education, and they have a lot of information on choosing a school um, for your child and giving your child and giving your families um, more opportunities to look at, you know, what is my expectation 
of my child's achievement as far as school is concerned and what um, learning choices do I have available to me and to my child as far as school selection is concerned and how do I go about um, looking at the steps for selecting the right school choice for my child and also um, you know just with that you probably can come up with a plethora of, of questions and uh, question and answers on your own as to, you know, how do I choose the right fit for my child? Or even if you're in a position to even, you know, unclutter your mind long enough <clears throat> uh, in today's climate to, to focus on, you know, what is uh, the route that I want my family or my child to take. Um, and so on the Department of Education's website, they have a few um tips for parents to be able to um, look at um, the best choices for their family and really they're just you know simple steps in selecting a school for your child and some of the things that definitely should be considered is you know am I choosing a public school or a private school um, do, is homeschooling the best fit for my family? Um, whether or not you're willing to pay tuition, um, which which requires um, some planning um, for some parents, and or whether or not they can get on the voucher system or receive some type of scholarship for their child to go to the particular school in which they would like to go to. So one of the recommendations is just simply just write down your thoughts about um, why you want your child to go to a particular school and what are your preferences and in looking at that just kind of write down about five things that you think are the most important things for you and your family in regards to selecting a school what are your top priorities and you know what do you want um, the school selection process to look like um, you may want to add or revise some things as you listen to the information tonight that we're going to present to you or as you're going through the process of those five things that are the most important to you. Uh, you may discuss that with your family and you may come up with different things that are more important than maybe they were initially for you when you decided to start looking at your school selection for your child. So the first thing is that they ask that you consider um, consider your child and your family. You know what your family makeup is and thinking about your educational needs and maybe even special languages that your child speaks. Um, what is it that your family makeup or your son or daughter um, needs and, and what's going to work best for someone um with the needs that your family has. So perhaps you might want to consider, you know, what are your child's needs first, right? So do they need a more structured environment? Do they need a less structured environment? Um, and or do they need a more challenging work environment? Or do they need more one-on-one -on -one attention? You think that they would thrive better in an environment like that? Or do they need additional help or on work assignments and would they need you know tutoring help at that particular school so looking at your child's individual needs and fostering um, you know what's going to be best for your child in that particular environment and looking at your child's learning style and how they best learn um, and is it through activity is it through discussion is it through you know listening are they more logical or mathematically minded uh, if you're definitely, if you're looking at magnet schools, you want to look at, you know, are they musical or artistic? Um, do they learn better in groups? And thinking about um, the school location, still in regards to your family and your child, um, do you want a school that's going to be in walking distance um, for your children? And is that particular school going to uh, have activities that nurture my child's talents um, outside of school um, or in the neighborhood? Do they have um, activities that your child could possibly participate in? And are you, how far are you willing to drive if, if 
You know, if you don't want to be in walking distance, how far do you really want to drive to um, get your child to that particular school? And do you want your child to be at a school where they have friends um, at that school? Or is that just not an important factor and they can spend time with their friends um, maybe on the weekends? And uh, another thing still under considering your child and your family needs is there child care near that school um, or do they have uh, an after school program? Is it going to be close to your work or close to relatives if, if you have that privilege? Because, again, it, you know, that may be something that you want to consider. You may or may not be near family. So then the second step after you consider your your family's personal needs, they they ask that you um, in this process gather information about the school. You know, do some investigation. This is something that most parents kind of do naturally. They make some phone calls to other friends and family. Um, definitely looking at the Internet and seeing, you know, what is the school's reputation? Um, looking at the different report cards on the schools and maybe even attending um, a school open house if you have an opportunity to. But definitely looking at the public report card of the school and looking at at any uh, reliable information that is online regarding the school. There is one site that they do um, um, offer as a reference. It's called greatschools.net and then also schoolresults.org where there's a resource booklet and information on particular schools um, throughout the nation. And also in considering and gathering your information, they, they ask that you explore what is the school's philosophy because most people work off of whatever their mission is and they try to stay pretty close to that. And so looking at that and the school policy and the services that they offer um, within that school and any um do they operate um, with educational activities outside of the regular school day? Um, do they have programs um, during the summer, vacation break, or do they offer free tutoring outside of the regular class day? Um, and then also in gathering your information, looking at the curriculum. Is that curriculum, do they have a strong core program for their core academics? Um, and do they offer any additional core academic subjects? Um, are they offering advanced placement or honors courses or dual enrollment courses for college courses? Um, does the curriculum have a theme? And one key thing is that does the school have evidence that the school is effective at um, teaching the students um, the information that they said that they're going to teach and do these enrichment programs, you know, are they across the board? Do they offer things for gifted students? And, and if so, um, do they have support for, you know, these upper level courses? And is the curriculum um, supported by other um, sources within the school? Or do they have special learning um, programs for students who have special needs? And do they have the accommodations to be able to meet those needs of those students? And so also in approaching um, the learning environment for your child, what is the teaching, um, do the teaching style of most of the teachers? Do they generally, you know, do group projects? Um, do they do in, base it on individual performance um, and the frequency of the testing within that particular school? And is this something that your child can adapt to and Will they be supported with that? Do they ha Are they provided with other opportunities to get extra help if needed? Um, and then, you know, how is how are the teachers actually um, interacting with the students and providing that feedback to the parents? And does it match your expectations of what you are looking for in a school? And, you know, what is their homework policy? And is the classroom size such that you feel that your child will get um, adequate um, instruction within that particular classroom? And does it affect the classroom performance?